Hey, everybody. Welcome to Manifestation Real Talk. I'm your host, Kristen Clark, Kristen M.F. Clark. And with me today is DK the Legend. Now, I came across DK on Instagram, and I loved what he was posting. I loved the, um, just the, and I'm going to put some of them up today, but I'm going to let him introduce himself and just give us a little quick update on who he is and what his current state is today in this now. Welcome. All right. Uh, so good to be here. I swear this is a manifestation within itself. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So, um, so yeah, so, um, name is, uh, Donald Kennedy. You know, I'm, I'm from Chicago, born and raised here, but the state that I'm in right now in this podcast or with anything when it comes to teaching and motivating is DK the legend, as you can see on my board right here. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, we were chatting a little bit before we started doing this and um, he was saying last night that he was nervous and I was just like yeah I wasn't even worried about it I knew that it was Donald that was nervous and it was DK that was going to step in and I made it really clear that I was doing a podcast with DK I was not doing a podcast with Donald because there is such an enormous difference right yeah and you want to tell me a little bit about that Yes. Uh, well, Donald, you know, saying, well, when I'm in the, you know, the state of Donald, should I say, uh, you know, sometimes I get a little bit nervous, you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. the, the fear kicks in and, uh, you know, it's, it's like I always have to always plan for stuff, you know, and but when I stay when I step into the state of DK, the legend, you know, everything is already there. You know, the confidence is there. You know, what I'm saying the, the energy that I need is there. And you know, and stuff just starts to happen automatically. Oh, yeah. You couldn't have said that better. You couldn't have. You know, I just recently went to Florida and it's it the the version of who I am when I was here versus who I was dealing with the airport and everything was vastly different. I was I was actually it was KMFC, Chris and MF Clark um in the airport, because when there was like, oh, your flight's going to be canceled, your flight's postponed or whatever, it was like. Not me, not me. I, I don't, I'm not available for that. And that's the, the coolest thing is this version of me is not available for the, oh my God, am, am I dressed right? Do I have the right makeup on? You know, what am I going to say? What if, what if, it, the, it, what if it doesn't go as planned? What if a hair gets out of place? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's just not available for those things. You're, you're having too much fun to, right. to play in those spaces. And I love that you said that. I love that. So DK asked me before we started this, where did the MF and Kristen MF Clark come from? <laughs> and well, MF for sure st stands for motherfucker. Kristen motherfucking Clark for sure, because it is, it is the definitive. It is the absolute. It's the, I'm not messing around. It's the, I'm not available. Um, it, it's all those things that it's just a reminder to me that I am the dragon. I am the lion. I am the God of this reality. 100%. This is my reality. And that's what I saw when I saw DK. When you and I were talking, you were like, well, it's DK the legend. And I'm like, oh, you are switching your name. <laughs> on Instagram. Yes. yes. So tell me a little bit about the state of DK or whatever else you had to say. OK, yeah. So uh, it's just an analogy that popped up in my mind that I think everybody would be able to relate to. Now, you know, the story about Superman, right? So, uh, you know, what I'm saying Clark Kent is his disguise. So basically, Donald Kennedy is my version of Clark Kent. And DK the Legend is my Superman, my version of Superman. Yeah. Basically. I love that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, back in 2015, I used to channel, I used to do channeling, like like Esther Hicks, Abraham Hicks, all that. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, who I generally always channeled, which surprised me when I was playing there is is a dragon consciousness called Iram. And see the thing, and the reason I don't do that anymore is I realized 
that the dragon consciousness or any names or Abraham or whatever you want, it's, it's you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just your permission to bring in that, that brilliance without going, huh, let me think about it, huh? You know, it, it's right. just this, it's this, it's a, it's a shortcut to your brilliance, right? And that's mm -hmm. DK, DK, the legend. And I, I love, and that's MF. It's just a shortcut to my brilliance. It's not pussyfooting around anymore. It's not playing mediocre or small anymore. Gotcha. I love that. Awesome. So tell me how you got to where you're at. You All know? right. You know, I anticipated that question. I really <laughs> did. Like, I imagine how I'm going to respond to it and everything. <laughs> All right. So uh, I originally started uh, with the law of attraction, you know, the, the secret. Yeah. You know, it's like um, I was going through a troubled time at the time, you know, and um, one and one night, you know, I got called. To, to go to the computer and when I went to the computer it's like the words just popped up in my head of what to type in and everything so I type in the secret on YouTube and so when I did that you know I saw you know like almost half of the the documentary itself and I just had a whole new epiphany and a whole new outlook on life and then uh, I went from doing that and then later on I was trying to get the book called the secret but uh the book um at the library that I went to, it had sold out. So um, I ended up getting the second book by Rhonda Byrne called The Power. And uh, The Power, you know, would, you know, I used to read that every single day. Like when I had nothing else to do, I used to go to the, um, to the train station and ride all the way from front to the back of the end of the train station almost every single day reading that book. I kid you not. And, uh, you know, I got some nice, good, crystal clear uh, clarity from that book as well, too. So um, I also, you know, came across uh, Abraham, you know, Esther Hicks, you know, and um, I mean, I was very intrigued, but I couldn't understand like the lingual, you know what I'm saying, of Abraham. So I kept listening to it over and over again. And then, you know, I just felt like it was a little missing piece to that puzzle. So, you know, so I dibble and dabble in uh, Abraham. Then I got introduced to Neville through the secret, by the way. Because, really? Like, uh, yes, uh, through the secret, because in that documentary uh, secret, um, there's a quote that they, uh, by Neville that they, that they put in there. And so that quote inspired me to look him up and see what he was all about. You know, so, um, so I looked him up. You know, I used to go to sleep, listen to him on my laptop and stuff. And, um, you know, I just started to really listen to him. And then, you know, I, like I said, I was just going back and forth between different types of so-called gurus of manifestation and LOA. But um, it always pointed me back to Neville for some reason. And I've been sticking with Neville ever since then. Now, I had an opportunity um, to meet um, Esther Hicks, also known as Abraham, you know, when she channeled that being. Yeah. And... Um, I had the pleasure to go to one of her workshops when she came here to Chicago one time. Oh, and I, I love must, it. Yes. And I must say it was a wonderful experience. It really was. And um, it's like the energy in there was just so amazing. You know, I, it's like I didn't want to leave, you know, and then I then uh, something <laughs> else had happened on that day, too. Like um, after, the, after it was like uh, I had a question that I wanted to ask. And so I was hoping that I get in the so-called hot seat, you know, so and so um, so basically when she began the workshop, she was explaining to everybody how how it doesn't work. Like you can't be raising your hand and say, oh, pick me, pick me, pick me. It don't work that way. And so <laughs> and so uh, this lady that was sitting next to me, she was like, listen, you know, I know how bad you want to go you know, say up there in the hot seat. So I'll tell you what. Maybe if you raise your hand a little bit higher, I could like <laughs> shove you and push you out to the middle of the floor so she can see you and possibly pick you. <laughs> so, so what happened was she said either one or two things is going to happen. She said either she's going to pick up your energy and, uh, and, and pick you, you know what I'm saying, out of everybody, you know what I'm saying, in the, uh, in the audience, or your answer is going to get, I mean, your question to you, you know what I'm saying, your questions are going to get answered through somebody else's question. And I said, okay, cool. I got to, I got to see this. And sure enough, 
this guy came up there and he asked a, a specific type of question that was the same question that I wanted to ask. And yeah. it got answered right then and there. <laughs> what was the question? You know what? I can't uh, remember what the question was, but I know it was something related, uh, I think, to family. Yeah. That I wanted to ask. Yeah. You know, something that was going on with my family back, back then. And yeah. uh, he asked that same question uh, pertaining to his family. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so what, and then. What was the huh? gist of the answer? Like what? Uh, well, the gist of the answer was, you know, like it, it like it's all part of my creation. You know, yeah. it's all about, you know, how, you know, my perception of it, basically. Yeah. And so, you know, and then, um, you know, I had to really learn to like step into my true identity, my true power, yeah. you know, and uh, instead of just keep on giving life to this, you know, what I'm saying to this, uh, you know, to that current reality at the time that I wasn't yeah. so pleased to hear or see. You know? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, so after the workshop was over with, I tag along with a couple of friends of mine who I met also off of this, uh, Facebook. So, um, at the time I didn't have any, you know, money to feed myself or whatever. So, um, they asked me, would I like to stick around? And then I was like, well, I would love to stick around, but you know, I don't have the funds right now to, you know what I'm saying, to do that. You know, and then she's like, she's like, well, I'll tell you what. She was like, um, you can come, like, you come along with us. And then, you know, I thought about, you know, eating, you know what I'm saying, eating my favorite food in the world, which is pizza, right? That yeah. ended again manifested through them. Of so course. as I was taking along, so as I was taking along with them, you know, we stopped at a pizza <laughs> restaurant and uh, you know, we ate real good. We walked, we fed some birds and stuff. We had a good conversation. I mean, that day was just so awesome. And look at that. You were in the state of, I don't have, and mm -hmm. you still manifested abundance within that without, without trying, without sitting there going, okay, I got to think right. I got to do this right or that right. You still, mm -hmm. without even trying and with mm -hmm. interacting with the state of lack, you still manifested abundance. And that's, that's everything. Mm -hmm. That's the MF truly. It's like, don't bring these rules of, of trying to cage this God. Don't tell me that I have to vibrate a certain way. Don't tell me I have to think a certain way right. in order to manifest. Are you kidding? I manifest like a motherfucker 24 seven without thinking of it, <laughs> without trying. And, right. and never am I afraid of me. Never am I, never. Cause I know I would never hurt me. I would never bring anything to me that could hurt me or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that was like the best. And I love that you went to the, um, the seminars. She's actually doing a few seminars right here in LA right now. Um, nice. And I've got a few, in fact, is it today? I think it's today. I think today's the one of them. And mm. it is, it is so much fun. In fact, I had, did you ever hear this? Um, if you were ever listening to any of the videos on YouTube, there's this mm -hmm. one lady who manifested the $9,000 diamond. So yes, she could, I remember that. She, mm -hmm. I interviewed her and wow. I didn't even know it was her. I didn't even, wow. <laughs> she, was just awesome. a, she was a friend that, you know, just, and finally I was like, you know what, let's, why don't you come on my podcast and let's chat. And we were talking, she goes, oh, I've got this story to tell you. She starts telling me the story. And I said, you know what, there's a lady who got in the hot seat on Abraham who has the same story. She goes, that was me. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was cool. I mean, that's, uh, um, in fact, for anybody watching this, I'll put the link to that, that one down below. Um, awesome. I also have another friend here in San Diego who has been in the hot seat over three dozen times. Whoa. Yeah. In fact, there's only one other person who's ever gotten in the hot seat more than her. And she's, mm. yeah. And you know, it's, it's, she actually, the last time she got in the hot seat, she was like going, she goes, you know, she goes, I really don't have a question. I just wanted to get up here. And their thing, <laughs> you know, their thing was, that's exactly it. You know, you're trying to manufacture a, a question so 
you can come up and get in this. And they're like, just jump over that. You just want to come up onto the stage and be a little closer. And she's, mm -hmm. and, and you know, they're like, and that's exactly what she did because she was clear on why she wanted to get up there, you know? And right. it's, and she understood that this, in fact, she's been to Tony Robbins a few times. She's gotten up on the stage with Tony Robbins a few times oh, and stuff. Okay. I know this, this chick is pretty amazing. She's powerful. Wow. Uh, awesome. And in fact, I'll, her name's Cheryl Jones and I'll, Sherilyn Jones, and I'll put her link down below too. Um, but yeah. I, you know, and I love that. I love that we are so surrounded by so many amazing reflections of ourselves, right? Yes. You know? You know, and it's not like someday I'll be like that. Wait, that is you. It's reflect. That's your mirror right there. Showing right. You how powerful you are. And isn't that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> All right. And also, I'd like to share with you how I started to put these, the, put the law to the test. Yes. OK. All right. So uh, I anticipated this to tell you this as well, too. <laughs> Good. Uh, OK, so. So here's what I did, you know, so I gradually made my transition from law of attraction to law of assumption, you know, because like I said, you know, uh, Neville gave me crystal clear clarity of what Abraham was talking about, oh. you know, so I understand what Abraham was talking about through Neville, yeah. Yeah. you know, like when she talks about like uh, vortex, you know, I, <laughs> and Neville translate that into like states or imagination or something like that. That's the vortex where everything yeah. exists all at once. You know, so, um, so yeah, so basically what happened was, is that, you know, I ended up going right back to Neville and to tell you the truth. I think Neville found me more than I found Neville because I actually, when I started listening to him, I actually had a dream about him as well too, one night. And, uh, it's like, yeah. And I couldn't understand, you know, saying what the dream was about. All I know is that I, he was sitting on top of our, you know, saying our couch in the same home I grew up in, you know, in my childhood home. And he, he like he seated, he was sitting in like in a crouched position like this or something like that. And he was just looking dead at me. And I was looking <laughs> at him. And then I'm looking like, okay, uh, do, you, do you have anything to say to me? <laughs> you know, and, and then uh, I woke from that dream. So, um, but what happened was like, I, okay, so the first thing I put this uh, law to the test was with my favorite food called pizza. You know, I love pizza. Anybody that, that, that knows me would tell you that that's my favorite food. <laughs> so, um, so what happened was I put this law to the test when it comes to manifesting pizza. So uh, back then, like I said, I was going back and forth, you know, from the different types of uh, LOA gurus. So I came across this guy by the name of uh, Kevin Trudeau, yeah. you know, and uh, he, you know, he's the guy who came out with that book called Natural Cures. He was like a, a whistleblower. And um, he came out with this uh, disc series called Your Wish is Your Command. So uh, I listened to that over and over again on YouTube. So I said, let me go ahead and put this to the test. I didn't know that this is also, you know, part of Neville's, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, material as well, too. I didn't know that at first. So I sat back on the couch and uh, I began to imagine sitting at the, di uh, the dining room table, you know, with a box of pizza, you know, say on the table or whatever, smelling the aroma of the pizza and everything. So I did this um, imaginal act, I want to say maybe multiple times throughout the week. And fast forward to like maybe about two or three weeks later, um, I was on my way towards the library. And I was sitting, you know what I'm saying, in the booth across the street from uh, another guy who was also in the booth. And we both was waiting on the bus. And the pizza place was right behind him. So what happened was he was, you know, he had his little medium or small box of pizza eating. And then, like, we, like, immediately locked eye contact with each other. He was over there. And I was over here. <laughs> and then I looked at him. He looked at me like, you want some? <laughs> and then I was like, <laughs> I was like, sure. And so I crossed the street. And then when I went over there across the street, he took his last slice of pizza that he was eating. And then he left the rest to me in the box. Oh, how cool. See? Yeah. Oh, that's, and you know what? I love that you said that Neville found you. Mm -hmm. I love that because it's, you know, in fact, you, you put one of your posts. So for the, you guys that don't know, uh, DK has on Instagram, DK, the legend, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, he puts up uh, quotes all the time. Um, yeah. 
in fact, I'm going to put a few of them up here, but one of them is you talked about how you're the, the puppet master. That wasn't exactly what you said, but it was about that. And yeah, okay. I mean, because Neville never came into reality until you acknowledged that he, here was yet another shortcut for you to know your greatness, know your power. And you created right. this amazing man named Neville Goddard. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. with Abraham and all of that. And it's, it's like, this is the amazing power of who we are. Is this mm -hmm. like, I manifested you, you manifested me. And right. it's, yeah, it, it, it is, again, it's, and part of a lot of your quotes are always just like, what, what reality are you creating? In fact, let me pull up one and we'll chat about it real quick. Okay. There we go. Um, you are your own competition. It is never us versus them. It is only you versus you. It only appears that way due to your belief about competition. So, yes. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I mean, it, it's always you versus you. If your reality isn't what, you know, you, is your dream, that's on you. Right? Right. And, and tell me a little bit more about what this means to you. Okay. So uh, basically it's by like, again, what Neville's theory about everyone is you pushed out. You know, everyone is us pushed out. Yes. So if everyone is us pushed out, there's really no competition between the so-called other. The other is an illusion. Only a character in your divine play, you know, that's, that's uh, reflecting, you know, the belief about competition that you have, you know. So you your own competition basically yeah boom mm -hmm. <laughs> boom yeah and yes. it, that really flies in the direct face of 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 uh, victimization you know when we're yes. when we and you know candace thought right oh I, I i love her she's one of my favorite mentors Yes, tell you. yes, yes. So for those of you guys, you've heard, you guys have probably heard me talk about Candace before, but I'll put a link to her down below. Um, mm -hmm. She is, she, you know, if you like, like for DK, he was having a hard time really understanding the lingo of Abraham. A lot of people have mm -hmm. the same problem with Neville and yes. she is, she will clarify it. Like nobody's, was, there is nobody out there that I know that has a grasp on law of yes. assumption and neville goddard then then candace she's mm -hmm. amazing yeah go ahead I, I i got a story to share with you about uh candace all right so, okay. all right so here we go um so yeah so it was during a time where you know uh our food stamps had got cut off you know so um so you know we was making any and everything out of you know say out of toast you know and um it was you know, it was very kind of depressing time for me and my mother Mm -hmm. But um, the thing is, you know, I went to Candace for advice with this mm -hmm. and uh, she told me she likes like, well, you know, she likes like, well, you know, you already know what to do. And then she said, you know, like, you know, just, you know, imagine whatever that implies that, you know, you got, you know, plenty of food or whatever, you know, like, yeah. like if you got plenty, of, you know, if you were to have plenty of food, you know, what I'm saying uh, if food was no longer the issue for you, like, what would you see? What would you experience? And so I begin to imagine opening up a refrigerator full of food, open up the freezer full of food. So what happened was, was this, I met a complete stranger online and this, and uh, I was compelled to tell him about what's going on. See, I'm, I'm never was the type to beg anybody for anything, yeah. you know, cause I had that fear of rejection, you know, cause I've seen it happen time and time again. So um, I was compelled to tell him about my situation at the time. And he said, like, you know what? You know, um, i tell you what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wire you some money. You go to Walmart and then, you know, and you get you and your mother some groceries. And I said, OK, so that's exactly what I did. And then, <laughs> and then on top of that, like, I didn't just stop right there. You know, I also ended up, you know, uh, manifesting, um, having my own you know what I'm saying, a uh, uh, link card for food stamps, you yeah. know, and the process was so easy. I'm talking about like back in the day, you know, you had to go through all these hurdles and, and, and hoops, you know, to, to, to see if you even qualify for it, yeah. you know, but it was so easy. All I, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I had my, um, 
you know, I like to call him my secondary father. You know, my biological father made his transition in uh, 2007. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I'm, yeah, yeah, 2007. That's right. So yeah, so um, so yeah, so you know, he he uh, he helped me out with this. You know, he didn't do nothing but just you know talk to the person over the phone or whatever, or put in an order, or, you know, what I'm saying application online. And so they called me, and it was like a over the phone uh, interview. That's all it was. And so I said to myself, I like. I know for a fact I got approved. And so, cause I was imagining, you know, going to the grocery store and swiping with the card and, you know, coming home with the bag of groceries. I imagined all that. And then, uh, then I called him like, I think I got approved for it. He was like, how you know? And I was like, I don't know. I just got that feeling in my gut. I approved for it. He was like, he was like okay, we'll see. And then next thing you know, um, they called me back. I want to say 15, 20 minutes later told me um, that, if I wanted to, I could come down and pick up the car today. I love it. Holy mm-hmm. cow. All in one day. Yep. Ta-da. You know, and that, that is just as great and amazing story as a $9,000 diamond. I mean, mm-hmm. because it was like, you, you knew what you wanted and it, not only did you get it, but you got it so much easier and effortlessly. And the universe just kind of did the whole thing for you. Like you said, that guy called and took care of it all. And mm-hmm. you were just like going, you know, there's this aspect of us that knows that life is this easy. It knows. And that's the DK, the legend. That's Chris and MF Clark. These aspects of you that that no, when it feels that good, when it feels that amazing, yeah, yeah, that's kind of the way, the normal way it is. That's just this like go. So before DK and I did this, I was telling him about my technique of where I, I imagine the version of me that's 20 years from now gets to come back and spend this day here, this day. And how would that version of me interact with this day vastly different than me? And you can really feel it. You can feel how that version of you is just going to, it's like, maybe you don't live in this particular area anymore. Maybe these certain people that are around you are long gone or whatever, 20 years from now. So you get a chance to see them and talk with them and see these areas that you take for granted. Right. And Mm -hmm. do you think that version of you, if it had today, if it had just today, to be mm-hmm. here in 2023 and all that, would it be sitting around looking and, and you know, mm, you know, would it be doing that? No, God, it would be going out and just stirring up the shit because eh, no consequences. And, but yeah. just having, yeah. And, 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 and really living, living this life with no fear, with no fear. And mm-hmm. when you let that version of you take the reins for the day, oh, and you know, that's what I see what happened there when you, when everything was easy and, and somebody else was doing it all for you. And all you had to do was just a phone call and say, yes, yes, no, yes. And, and oh, come on down and get it. And yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And do you, know, do you and- have, do you have any other like oh go ahead yes 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 absolutely <laughs> and you know I, i'm a big fan of uh you know it's all done for you service you know i love it you know so <laughs> yeah. you know because like because you know like you know growing up you was always told that you know like if you want something in life you got to go out and get <laughs> it and you got to put all this type of physical effort into it yeah. but here's what i learned though and this do my <laughs> own do my own experience I learned that it's not about the physical actions that you take because like what, what it's like a quote that Neville had said, he said something like, um, I'm trying to think, maybe you can help me out with this. He said something about like, um, you know, to, to try to make any physical effort, you, you know what I'm saying? Like it goes against the very nature of, yeah. of you know, like without changing your, your mental first. Yeah. Yeah. Because you everything know. arises from your imagination. So you're kind of right. doing it backwards. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, um, I did a little experiment with this to see, you know what I'm saying? The whole thing about, you know, about not, uh, not, not pushing, uh, not lifting the finger, you know what I'm saying? To make it so. So here's what, so here's what happened in my experience one time. Right. So, okay. So, um, I had to go, you know what I'm saying? I had to use the, you know what I'm saying? The restroom. 
So, um, you know what I'm saying, in my mom's house, you know, there's this little fan that's designed to get rid of, you know what I'm saying, the odor when you flip the switch <laughs> on. Yes. So, so you know, um, I don't know what the name of that device is or whatever, <laughs> but all I know is, yeah, yeah, just, just a fan, just a fan. <laughs> but anyway, so my, you know what I'm saying, so I've already had imagined before I went in there. I imagined, you know what I'm saying, going in there, flipping the switch. That's what I did, right? So tell poof. me why when I came, when I, exactly, poof. You know what I'm saying? And then so I opened up the door. I closed the door. Tell me why my right elbow jolted upward by itself and it hit the switch automatically. <laughs> That's how I know it's not about your physical actions. Your, your body is listening to your, your, your mind, your thoughts. The, 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 the mind is the commander in chief and the body is his soldier carrying out the mission. Well, and think about, you know, a baby. The baby yeah. is not grinding and nose to the grindstone to get what it wants it's not having to work hard it's not having to slave no it has mm -hmm. food you know light it has safety it has security it has freedom to be whoever it wants and everybody thinks it's oh it's so cute you know <laughs> it can just shit everywhere and everybody's like oh my god <laughs> okay fine we'll clean it up for you you know right i mean the baby is and and it that's an invitation that's mm -hmm. you know for i mean it's like if you're like me, where you know time doesn't exist, there was no baby. You're, we're manifesting the memory right here, right now. We're manifesting in this moment, right here, right mm -hmm. now, the, the illusion that you were ever a baby. It's just an invitation for a life that easy, for a life that simple. And it's not, you know, and I get people that are like, oh, you're taking advantage of those around us. I'm like, you're, you're the creator of those around you. Why would you create people who say, no, I'm not helping you. You have to do it on your own. You have to work and sweat and, you know, and, and do all of that. Why would mm -hmm. you manifest that when you, when you have the invitation right here, mm -hmm. right now from the, the highest version of you? To go, mm -hmm. yeah, life is that easy. Everything has always got my back. Every life, the universe, whatever you want to call it, universe is why mm -hmm. the universe has always, right. always got your back. And I love that. Yeah. I love the elbow. It's, it's right. got a life of its own. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of uh, universe, I was just thinking about this, you know, uh, I want to say a few days ago. All right. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this guy. He's also... Uh, a YouTuber by the name of Dan, the radio style, you know, I don't but, think so. um, yeah. So, so yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, uh, he, I would listen to, I, I just listen to him every single day too on YouTube. And, uh, he had this song playing in the background called you are the universe, you know? And, and so like when I heard, and I listened to it myself and then I was like, wow, look at that message in that song because <laughs> for so long when you get when you when you go into the beginning stages of loa law of attraction you know you know you told that you know you told like the universe is outside of you or something like that but so no I, that song right 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 that song you know, telling you no you are the universe you are you, you. Know? right yeah this yeah. yeah so so yeah so um yeah so that's that's what uh you know that's what i was thinking about too oh another thing that had came to mind to me, you know what I'm saying, recently too. Okay. Okay, you know, like that's oh that saying in the Bible, faith without works is dead, right? Yeah. So many, many people interpreted that works as in phys just physical action, yeah. you know, but uh, but they they totally disregard the mental action, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that takes place first. And the physical is inspired, and sometimes it don't even feel like effort at all. You know what I'm saying? It's just something that happens naturally, you know, when you're in that new mindset or that state, of, you know what I'm saying, uh, or, or that new state of being yes. or whatever. So um, here's what happened. Like, I kid you not, this voice came to me. It's just as clear as day. And the question came to me, it said was, do you think that God or the universe needs your help will bring forth these things into your reality? <laughs> Did God need help creating the heavens and the earth? And I said, no. And then, you know, and then I was like, so, and he said, like, so why do you think you need, you know what I'm saying, you need to do a thing in order for me to help you, you know what I'm saying, you know, bring yeah. forth these things into your world. 
you and know? when you when you step into that the way neville mm-hmm. thinks of the word god which is your imagination yeah. right so yeah did your imagination need any help from you to create everything around you right now including me including whatever you're mm-hmm. we're talking on yeah this was very this was it was very easy and effortless love that that was so good that was so good i haven't you know that that's a great mm-hmm. oh that was so good the very very first speaking event i ever did mm-hmm. <laughs> a long time ago back in the, back in the day um <laughs> i did nothing for it i i was just a friend of mine was like hey i'm having this spiritual fair we're taking a, over ojai california um would you be interested i need some speakers you want to do and i've never done any speaking she Mm. was just a friend of mine and she goes do you want do you have a subject you'd like to speak on and at the time it was spirit guides and i was like yeah and i don't know why i said yeah i was just like yeah and and (laughs) so she's she did all the work she rented the venues she um had me said these times all i had to do was show up she sent out she set it all up she set up you know announcing it to the public she did everything i did nothing i didn't have to do a damn thing i just had to show up and speak and i got there and the room and the room i was gonna speak in was standing room only there were people outside the windows there i couldn't even get in the room i'm like can i get bye and they're like oh yeah this is for so and so i said yeah i know i'm the speaker can i get in there and it was nobody knew who i was nobody had ever heard of me but there it was just crammed full and when i was done doing my stint my my uh, my topic people lined up to hug me and say thank you and just chat and, and the next speaker was like had to shoo us all out because she mm-hmm. needed the room and it was and it was the coolest thing in the world to remember over and over and over i didn't do a damn thing nobody had wow. ever heard of me nobody knew who i was and nowadays when i'm like oh i've got to you know i've got to send out emails and i've got to do this and i got to do that i remember that i remember that the best time I ever had doing any kind of a speaking event, which is my thing. I love, love, love live. I love get up on a stage and live. That is my, my, that's me. (laughs) (laughs) I never did a damn thing for that. I didn't do a damn thing. And that's the constant invitation is to remember that the best ones are the ones where somebody reached out to me, not the other way around. And it, mm-hmm. it's always, there's always these invitations in life for, it can be this way. And like you said, you know, it was, did God have to do anything for, did need any of your help for any of this? Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Not at all. I know. When you woke up this morning and you knew you had to go to the bathroom and, you know, you didn't do anything. You didn't have to meditate. You didn't have to be in the perfect mood to manifest a bathroom. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was just, uh, and the more we can get into that mindset the mindset of it just shows up it just shows mm-hmm. up and we get to play you know go out and play like when we're all done with this i mm-hmm. i'm gonna go do this hike down to this waterfall and to see what it looks like and you know mm-hmm. go ahead okay all right <clears throat> so another thing that amazes me this is okay. Um, I also used to uh, study this guy by the name of Bert Goldstein. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he, you know what I'm saying? Like he just, I think he discovered quantum jumping. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so he, this guy taught himself two type of skills, photography, and he taught himself how to play the piano without any instructor or any class. Now yeah. that right there, years ago, I would have said that's unheard of. You know what I'm <laughs> so, so here's, here's what he said he did. He said that, you know, he did this thing where like, which, you know what I'm saying? Like he closed his eyes and he imagined meeting his so-called, what he liked to call himself doppelganger, which yeah. is his, his, you know what I'm saying? One of the infinite versions of himself that already possessed the skill to do that. Yes. So he looked at it, he observed himself and then he emerged himself, you know what I'm saying? With that, <laughs> with that future version of himself. 
And yeah. so when he did that, he when he used to awaken from his meditation on his imaginal act, as Neville would say, he will he will bring forth I mean, he would bring back with him what he liked to call rhythm, which is knowledge, you know what I'm saying, of that skill, you know, and then he is practicing, uh, you know what I'm saying, day after day, day after day, until he got better and better at playing the piano and at photography. You know, <laughs> that, that's another example about, you know, you know, uh, you don't need a so-called outside, you know what I'm saying, person to help teach you these things. You know what I'm saying? You, your brain is capable of downloading, you know, your information. We do it all the time. Yeah. Where do you think well, that outside person came from? Is your brain. It all right. arises from within you anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. And in you your know? dreams. In your mm -hmm. dreams, you can just go sit down on piano and play. You can just yeah. pick up a language mm -hmm. and say it and do it, know it. And there's, right. you know, again, there's that invitation of, yeah, it's this easy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And now I want to share, I also want to share with you um, my, one of my favorite manifestations, one of my favorite. <laughs> this is still this is still at the top of everything so far. <laughs> Nothing has triumphed this yet. So uh, okay, so I actually manifested meeting uh, a celebrity. So uh, okay, I'm a you know for those that are, for no, for those of people who know me personally, they know I'm a big fan of wrestling. You know, what I'm saying like my father introduced me to it at an early age. So um, there's this wrestler known as the Undertaker. Oh yeah, so, uh, that is yeah. <laughs> yes. And so, 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 so here's, so, so here's what uh, happened with that for many years after following law of attraction, you know, I didn't get not, not no type of results at, uh, at all. I used to dream about meeting this guy and everything, you know? So one day I came across this other YouTuber by the name of Brian Scott. He has this YouTube channel called reality revolution. I know, and so Brian. he was, yes, absolutely. Amazing guy. <laughs> I love his, his his narration, you know what I'm saying, on different, you know, you know, yeah. uh gurus and stuff like that. So um he um so he was talking about one of Neville's lecture called The North of the Strip. And in that lecture, he Neville talks about the Western Gate method. And so, you know, and I was like, like, what is the Western Gate method? And so it was later on revealed to me as I listened, you know what I'm saying, to that lecture, is using your sense of touch. In your imagination yeah so here's what i did i imagine meeting the undertaker like right in front of him you know and taking it you know what I'm saying like he's signing his you know saying his autograph and giving it to me and so i did that imaginal act i want to say maybe several times throughout that week fast forward i think to maybe again two weeks or three weeks later something told me i, I felt compelled to check the news feed on my phone and so I checked the news feed on my phone. I scrolled up and down. And then I found an article that says the wrestler known as The Undertaker will be available here in Chicago on this specific day at this specific time. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this can't be real. And then this, I'm like, wow, this, 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 this stuff actually works. And so <laughs> what happened was. Works. <laughs> right that's why i said <laughs> but 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 yeah so um so what happened was i went into these uh one of these ne uh neville goddard community groups that on facebook and um i said like wow i can't believe it i'm getting ready to meet them for the very first time and someone commented at the bottom of you know what i'm saying of uh my post and said why are you selling I'm like what you mean it was like why are you just going for the autograph when you could get a picture taken with the untaken and then I said, I like, I like, you know what? You're right. I like, but I already called the ticket master. The lady said it's gonna cost extra for the photo op ticket. She said, listen, it don't matter what that lady told you. Imagine <laughs> what it's like to take a picture with the Undertaker and watch what happens. So that's exactly what I did. So I said, okay, I'm gonna play around with this. So I imagine walking up to him, and I felt his hand shaking my hand in imagination, and um, you know, and taking a picture with him. And I imagine posting it on Facebook, telling my friends and family what it was like. And I kid you not. Fast forward <laughs> to the very day of that meeting. And I would I had just purchased my autograph ticket, right? And then my, you know what I'm saying, my second father, as I like to call him, you know, he stopped me dead in my tracks because we because uh, we was told that he was in a photo op section and it was gonna take a while for him to get into the autograph section. So they told us we could go ahead and get, grab us some lunch or whatever until he get ready to, 
you know, get ready to take some pictures. So he stopped me dead in my tracks. And he said, listen, what do you really want? You know what I'm saying? It kind of felt like Neville Abdullah was talking to me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, what do you really want? Do you want to get it? Do you want to get his autograph or do you want to take a, you know, say, take a picture with him? I said, I'd rather take a picture with him because that could be one of my favorite memories of a lifetime. And then he said, okay, well, get back in that line and you tell, you ask them, say, like, how much does it cost to get, you know, to get exchange? Can you get it? Could you get exchange for the autograph ticket for the photo op? Or how much does it cost to get the photo op ticket instead? So I kid you not, I got right back in line in front. I, you know, say I cut in front of somebody, <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, That's so I asked, it. <laughs> right. So I asked the lady at the, at the counter, I was like, um, uh, excuse me, miss, is it possible that I can get an exchange for this autograph ticket for a photo op ticket? Hold on right there, sir. I'll be right back. So she went on and talked to the manager, I guess she came right back. Well, I got good news. I was like, <laughs> Not only would you be able to get an exchange for the autograph for the photo op ticket, but it would be at the same price you paid for the autograph ticket. Of course. Now, 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 I, kid, now, now I kid you not. Um, the lady over the phone from the ticket master told me that it would cost extra, but I didn't have to pay extra. It was that same price. It just got exchanged for the photo yes. op ticket. Oh my God, that is so cool. See? Oh. Yep. And then... And then on top of that, like when I took a picture with them and stuff, you know, and uh, and I was waiting in line for the for the uh, for the photo to develop. And so um, I was uh, busy talking to other fans of The Undertaker. You think you're a fan of a celebrity. You have no <laughs> idea the, the, the type of fans that's out there, you know, they got more <laughs> stuff than you. And you know what I'm saying? And so um, I was just talking to them and stuff. And then they had like a WrestleMania three, a three day uh, WrestleMania event. I could have had went, but I chose to meet the Undertaker. That's something that I always wanted to do. And uh, all of a sudden they was holding up the uh, the photo, you know what I'm saying? Of the people who took pictures with the Undertaker. And um, so I didn't see mine. So somebody recognized my picture and they brought it to me. <laughs> well, you're on fire that day. Yes. Absolutely. Oh my God. That's As so a matter crazy. of fact, let me. I, I, I got proof. I got proof. Hold you on. got proof. Where is it? Yes. Here you go, right here. Oh my gosh. Look at that smile. <laughs> You're just like, dude. <laughs> felt like a kitty in the, felt like a, a kid in the candy store. <laughs> Look at you. Oh my gosh. That's yep. so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And look at, you know, like, like we were talking about a minute ago, everybody will do it for you you know right mm -hmm. yeah yeah they got they took got went and got your picture for you and they were, oh my god that's so much fun yes yeah. absolutely yeah and you know it's it's just so it's so awesome and there let me bring up one more of your thingies sure um, every belief has its own corresponding world of events and go ahead and tell me what you know what that means to you especially okay, so talked about <laughs> okay so so uh i got a little bit of this you know what i'm saying i got inspired by neville when i when i mm -hmm. did this quote you yep. know um you know so so basically you know what i'm saying your belief has a world of its own you mm -hmm. know you know what i'm saying so you know so when so naturally things are naturally drawn to you according to your beliefs about that thing or about that person so you know so so if, so if you like so if you end up shifting states, you know what I'm saying, you know, beliefs, should I say, you know, when you shift those beliefs, you know, um, you know, you, you know what I'm saying, like uh, everything around you begins to change. So it's kind of like what the what the Bible says about do uh, be not conformed of this world, but be ye transformed due to the renewing of your mind. So basically, like when you renew your beliefs, you know what I'm saying, like not only you going to be transformed, to a tour that said that that new better version of you but everything around you including the people that you encounter you, you encounter with on a daily basis are also going to respond differently yeah so mm -hmm. what would you so if somebody was asking you well how do you do that okay well conception of self self-concept you know i said that's what i that's what i will point them to you know which is the the cornerstone for you know all these manifestations 
You know, you first, you know, like Neville said, I'll take them to that quote where Neville said, you know, there's no one to change except for your conception of yourself. You know, yes. I, I love that quote. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, yes. you know, go go into that a little deeper as far as you okay. know, changing the conception of yourself. So, so, you know, so first and foremost, you know, um, I'll also tell them about, you know, the whole theory about parallel realities. You know, there are infinite versions, you know, say of yourselves existing all at once, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, right now you may be that version of yourself that doesn't have that thing. But however, there's a version of you that's already complete with everything that you need, you know, that will, you know, say that is already experiencing the pleasure of these things. So all you got to do is begin to change you know what I'm saying? You know, your thoughts. You begin to change, you know what I'm saying? You begin to change, your, you know what I'm saying? The way you think and the way you feel. And now it's very important. Neville made this very, very, very important. And it, it always stands out when you say this. It's a difference between thinking of your desire and thinking from it. To know what you want, you are thinking of it. But the, when you go a little bit extra from thinking from it, meaning you already that version of yourself that possess these things in your imagination, be that character right now in your mind, in your imagination and think what all, ask yourself, what all would I be doing right now? If I was this, if I was that version of myself, what all would I see? What all would I smell? What all would I touch? You know, depending on what the desire is. And then once you do that, you begin to exercise that over and over and over again until it takes on the tones of reality to, the, to reach the level of naturalness. And then when they reach to the level of naturalness, uh, natural naturalness, you know, then you go into what Neville calls the um, uh, what's that? What's that word I'm looking for? Maybe you can help me figure this out. Uh, uh, I, I'm trying to think. It's it's a period of rest. Yeah. Oh, meditation. Meditation. No, no, not meditation. No, 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 not, no, not meditation. Oh, uh, oh, 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 the state akin to sleep. No, 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 no. Not, not state akin to sleep. It's, it's, it's another word that never used where, where, you know, it's a period of mental rest. Um, mental rest. Wait, wait, <laughs> Just wait. Just go with that for now. <laughs> it's, 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 it's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <I'm trying to> <laughs> <think>. <laughs> so in this moment, jump ahead to mm -hmm. the moment where you you remembered it and you're like, oh, yeah, it's that. You, you know, you mm -hmm. feel that. That's what I do. And it, you yeah. know, it, it you really are on, I'm going to give your mind a little break here. Uh, you really, it, that's exactly it is, is, you know, you, I always say leapfrog, leapfrog forward to that version of you right. and ask, you know, would I be doing these things if I was this version of me? And mm -hmm. I do want to point out that when you were going into the bathroom and you right. knew that there was a fan there. There was no, nothing you did. You just were automatic that state, the state of the person that has a fan in their bathroom. And you mm -hmm. hit it with your elbow without even thinking, without even trying. Right, and, right. Yeah. And it, I know you're going to look it up. It's bugging you. You, got <laughs> you ran my back. <laughs> That's I'm determined. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. Because, it, you know, it's, it's perfect. Yes. You know, see, the thing is, is the, the natural part of us, the part of us that's not thinking, the part of us that's in between mm -hmm. the processes and the thoughts is already doing this, is already imagining, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to go to school at UCLA, I got accepted, da, 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 da. and you're already imagining going to school without trying you're not trying to imagine going to school there you're thinking ahead right. of oh what's it going to be like what's the campus going to be like where am i going to be staying and you're already in that imagination you're already in that creator mode without thinking and you don't need to do any rests or anything go got it i found it it's <laughs> called the sabbath oh the, the sabbath, sabbath. it's yeah, the so sabbath yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so once you start to, you know, loop those thoughts and those sync, those imaginal acts over and over again, or affirmations, you know, you know, whatever that works best for you, you know, and then soon you will enter what they call the Sabbath, which is a period of mental rest. And, yeah. you know, once you do that, you know, everything is already working itself up. You know what I'm saying? Your, your God self, your higher self, whatever you want to call it is already putting, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we got those characters all queued up and ready to play for you. Isn't that awesome? 
-hmm. Yeah. And that, I mean, you could say when we're done with this and I'm going to go for my hike, that's my Sabbath, you know, but it's not, I'm Mm. not thinking that I'm just like going, Ooh, I can't wait to go for my hike. I can't wait to go see what the waterfall looks like. I've got to Mm -hmm. try and find it because it's all buried under snow. (laughs) It's going to be a hell of an adventure. Um, and it, it really is, there is such a naturalness, you know, like when you're dreaming at night, there's just this naturalness, you, this whole dream, everything in that dream has, has come from within you. It's already right. come from within you, but you're not thinking that you're just interacting with whatever, you know, the tree that's talking to you or whatever it's normal right. in that moment it is normal to have a tree talking to you. You, it, you don't question it. You're not sitting there in the dream going, oh, how weird. You're just mm-hmm. playing along, right? And right. It, it, it's, it's normal. It, is, it has the feeling and the reality of normal. So when you're in a state of, oh, I'm struggling, I've got to manifest, I got to play, you're, you're creating, oh, this is normal. It's normal to suffer. It's normal for victimization. This is normal. And it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna wake from that dream too <laughs> and right so, right yeah you don't have to do that you get to relax you get to just be in that sabbath go ahead <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh so yeah so um what really you know what I'm saying like makes you know what I'm saying like uh the, the law of assumption the way neville taught it you know stands out for me you know what I'm saying is that you know that that whole uh thing about everyone is yourself pushed out you know, because like, you know, growing up as, you know, little kids and stuff like that, you know, all we did, all we had to rely on was our imagination and our parents. That's all we had to rely on. We didn't have to worry about anything else, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, things just came, you know, automatically and natural for us. You know, we, yeah. um, we imagine having a bicycle and guess what happened? You know what I'm saying? Our mother or our father might have told us no in the very beginning, but they, you know what I'm saying, but they end up getting a change of heart. Why do you yeah. think they got a change of heart? Because you persisted in the knowing that that bike was already yours. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then, so, and then on top of that is like, it also gets you out of that victim mentality as well too. Cause you know, like we've been, our mind has been so conditioned before we, you know what I'm saying? Come across, you know, LOA or whatever. Our minds was totally conditioned to, you know, think that, you know, because of, you know, to play the blame game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Blaming on him and her. You know what I'm saying? For you not being successful and stuff like that. And, you know, never tells you, you know, like, hey, you know, everyone is a part, you know what I'm saying? Everyone is you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're only responding towards your conception of yourself and your conception of them as well, too. Yeah. So that right there was put a, a huge, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, icing on the cake for me when it comes I to, you know what I'm saying, manifestation. Yeah. Yeah. Remembering that everyone is you pushed out that's perfect (laughs) and I love that you brought up the bike because just before you said that I was imagining a a black bike with flames on it and everything I know and I was like going I wonder if he had a bike like that and you start talking about a bike (laughs) well I won't well I mean I you know saying um I I never I mean I wasn't the type to you know saying like to uh to ride a bike or whatever yeah you know yeah but you know, I have you know, of course, I rode one before and stuff. You know, you it, it's it's a it's a part of my yeah, huh? You get to change hmm? that memory, right? You do, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and that's, that's a, and that's go wait, wait, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, when I get excited about these things, it, it's, it's hard for me to shut up sometimes. <laughs> no, that's good. That's exactly what I love. Okay, okay, awesome. All right, so I played around a little bit with uh, revision. So here was my very first experiment with a uh, revision, you know, the, that, I, that I can remember. So um, one time uh, I was awakened from my sleep, you know, and um, my nephew, you know what I'm saying, came and uh, woke me up and said like, uh, yo, um, you know, we, we need some help bringing the, 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 the big flat screen TV upstairs. And so I said, okay, so I end up, you know, I was still kind of halfway asleep, you know, but I ended up getting up, you know, putting my shoes on, stuff like that, going outside. So as I was standing there and he was hitting the button because my sister had one of those vans that got the sliding doors, you know, that, you know, you hit the button and then it, it slides. So, so he, he hit the button and I grab a hold to the latch and uh, I guess I put too much grip into it and I end up breaking the, the, the handle off, you know what I'm saying, off the thing, you know? And so, and so he turned around and looked at me like, oh, 
how did you do that? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then later on, and then later on, it dawned on me why that happened. Okay, so uh, prior to that event, I was practicing affirmations. Like, uh, it's called affirmations. Why am I so strong? Why am I so fast? You know, so I used to ask these questions to myself. It's kind of like a, a, another hack to get up I in your subconscious. That. Yeah, yeah. I learned that from somebody else. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, so um, I kept playing around with that, right? And then I'm like, hmm. And then I'm like, you know what? I think, I think by me saying those affirmations, this was evidence to prove that I am strong. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I came to that conclusion. And then I was like, "Woo! I gotta be more careful with what I ask for nowadays." <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, you know, my word had got back to my mother, and like, you know, that's coming out your pocket, right? And then I was like, "Damn!" I was like, "Like, how I'm gonna get out of this?" And then next thing you know, <laughs> so I thought about, it, like, wait a minute, there's this thing called revision. Let me play around with this real quick, because I'm gonna be honest with you, I ain't want to have to pay no extra money, you know, say out of pocket for that. So, um, so I, so what I did was. I, in my mind, I relived the whole scene, but this time I played out a different outcome that was more favorable for me. So yeah. what happened was I imagined right back to that scene where he, my, uh, uh, my nephew hitting that button to unlock the sliding door. So I imagined open up the door successfully over and over and over again. So here's what happened. A week or two later, they act as if it never even happened. The door never got fixed. But they act as if it never happened. They start talking about it completely. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I've, yes. I've done, I'm the revision queen. And I, I've done some, I had a, a, you talk about the feel, you know, the imaginary feel. Mm -hmm. I had the wallet. I don't know if you heard about the story of the wallet where I had gotten all the way down the hill because I live up on this mountain. I got all the way down the hill to the store mm -hmm. and I've forgotten my wallet. And it's, this is a 30 minute drive in good traffic. And so I was like, shit. And I was thinking, <laughs> you know what? Let's play with some out of thin air manifestation and revision. And so usually the wallet sits on the empty seat next to me. And I specifically remember that wallet, it, I left it on the couch. I specifically remember that. So I, in my imagination, I changed it. To picking it up and I could feel it. I could feel the, the texture of it. I could feel the weight of it. I felt me sticking it under my armpit and shutting the door. And I just went through the whole thing. And I specifically, you know, and I didn't do this on purpose. It just kind of played out on its own, but mm -hmm. I got in my car and I set it on the seat next to me. And I, you know, it, it really was about the feel that that's the one thing that really stands out is this whole revision was the feel of that wallet on. Um, and I also felt in that moment, me reaching over onto the, ch the chair and feeling it and it's right. there. And sure enough, it was there out of thin air and poof, there it was. My wow. Wallet. So, so, yeah. so, 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 so wait, wait, wait. So basically like, like you had the memory of it, uh, of you leaving it at home, right? And then yep. you said it came out, of, and then you said you did that little uh, revision, and yep. then it automatic, and then it appeared in your yep. uh, it, where at now? Yep, on the seat next to me. So I was oh, wow. down. Uh, yeah, I was. I specifically remember leaving it on the couch. So I revised that memory. I revised mm. the memory to like you did with the door with. Right. I bent down, pick it up. And I, and I, you know, that was just a revision in my mind. And I didn't know if this, and the other thing was this, I didn't know if this was going to work or not. And I didn't care. I was like, well, if I, can, if I, you know, whatever it was, there was no big deal. And so in my mind, I'm playing that out. And then nice. I reach over onto the seat and there it was, it was right there. So poof out of thin air. And wow. yeah, yeah. And we, you know, I, I had another one where I was under the deck here, um, you know, cleaning some stuff up and I hit my head so hard on a beam Ooh. that it Ooh. knocked me down. And in that moment, I heard revise. And so <clears> I was just like, I never hit my head. I didn't hit my head. I was fine. And I just stood up and went on. And I was fine. And there's no mark. There's nothing. And it was wow. like, yeah. And so revision is fun, it, you know, and it really is about the fun of it. 
you know, mm. it, it, and, and not attaching anything really important to it other than this is fun. I can't wait uh, to see what happens. And awesome. yeah, I've got a ton of those stories. I've got a ton Ooh. of those stories. I, yeah. I love, I, I absolutely love success stories. They, they keep me motivated. Oh, it keeps me, yeah. It keeps me going. I That's love success stories. It's all about, it's all about the success stories, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 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 it's one thing to sit there listening to somebody preaching, you know, like mm -hmm. Neville Goddard reading a book on how to do this, but mm -hmm. his book, The Law and the Promise has tons of success stories in it. That's why mm -hmm. I like that book is, yeah. It's, yeah. And that's what I love on here is listening to like you with The Undertaker, all of that is the yeah. success mm. stories and being able to go even bigger, inviting yourself like with the wallet to go even bigger. That wallet was not there. There was no, I mean, there's nothing on that chair, <laughs> the seat, next right. to, you know, it wasn't like I missed it or it was buried under anything. There was nothing there. And, yeah. and then the next instance, it was there out of thin air manifestation, but it's also for me, I think the important thing is the whatever. It's no big oh, yeah. deal. Yeah, if it happens, it happens. Like you with, you know, it was cool to have his autograph, but it'd be right. cooler to be, you know, but it wasn't like life or death. Like I need, right, right, right. you know, and right. it was so easy for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, and uh, so, yeah, I definitely got to dive in more with revision, you know, this year, you yeah. know, that's, yeah. that's, that's very, yeah, that's very awesome. Yeah, revisions. Revision is. I had one of the biggest ways I use revision was um, I was mm -hmm. a checker at Vons, and we were so, we were supposed to ask each person going by, "Do you want to buy a hum hunger bag?" And I didn't want to <laughs> do that. <laughs> I mean, people are already spending a lot of money on their groceries. Last thing I want to do was, "You want to give another five dollars for these mm -hmm. hunger bags?" And these hunger bags are just bags of food that go to the homeless or whatever. Mm. And um, I, I revised that number one, people wanted to do this. People saw oh. it and were like, Oh, I can't wait to go to Vons and do this. But mm -hmm. the other thing was I also revised every time I heard a no, it was a yes. In ah. that, every single time somebody said, no, 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 thanks. I, in my mind heard a yes. And so you start getting like, Oh, cool. And it started yeah. happening. It started happening. I started hearing yeses after mm -hmm. yeses. When no, none of the other checkers were hearing yeses, I was the I had the highest highest score. So then mm -hmm. I challenged myself. I was like, somebody's going to want to buy twenty. But you know, how high can I go here? What feels impossible? Mm. And the very next couple that came through, the wife was all done, and I I was just kind of like, I don't even want to ask. I'm not going to ask these people. I'll ask the next one. <laughs> And the husband's right. just following along. He's on his phone and stuff. And after she's paid and they're walking away, he, he turns around and he goes, oh, wait a minute. And he points to one of the hunger bags. He goes, how much are those? And I said, they're $5. And he whips out a $100 bill. He goes, give Whoa. me 20 Wow. <laughs> yes. And this gets better. Awesome. This gets better. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm doing that. I'm like, wow, this shit really works. And so then I was like going, okay, what feels ridiculous? And I'm going 40, 40, $200 worth. Mm. So yeah, that night I'm, you know, everybody's going by and this little old lady who looks like mm -hmm. she's on food stamps and stuff comes into my line and she goes, mm -hmm. I didn't say anything to her. And she, you know, we're, we're, everything's all done. And she goes, oh, honey, she goes, why don't I get 40? of those. Or I asked her, I said, do you want to buy a hunger bag? She goes, yeah, why don't I get 40? And I went, oh, holy shit. And wow. she goes, you know what? She goes, I was standing in line and I asked God, how many should I buy? And I clearly heard 40. Wow. <laughs> you want to blow away even more? Yes. I love she it. Keep asked, going. She asked God and she heard me. Wow. This is definitive proof. You are the God of your reality. You Absolutely. Are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was Candace that pointed that one out, by the way. She was like, yes. 
uh, she she asked God and she heard you. And I went. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but I was just like going, that was it. That, that, that was unbelievable. That, you know, I tell that story all the time because it was just over and over. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, also, like, like, um, I also, you know, um, used to do network marketing as well, too. So, you know, like I, I got very good marketing experience as well. So um, I remember like when I used to do network marketing, they used to always tell us about the law of averages. But when it comes to the law itself, you know, the law of averages do not have to apply to you anymore. No. <laughs> you just proved you're, that. <laughs> yeah, you're the God. You're the God. Right. Yeah, and no matter what, no matter how many times I heard a no, I heard a yes. I, immediate, I did real-time revision, which is mm. in that moment right there. I revised it to hear yes. And so you, I was like giddy. I was giddy with these imaginal yeses. I was just so silly. And sure mm -hmm. enough, at the end of the month, I had sold way more. They were like, how did you do that? And I'm like. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. I love I'm God. it. Wow, DK, thank you so much for playing. I can't wait to, you know, have you on again and have you tell even more stories because I know there's going to be some amazing ones from this. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, you yep. want to end with anything? Uh, yeah. Uh, also, I'm I'm also going to get back into uh, coaching again this year as well too, because like I, you know, I started off. I think it was not last year, or the year before last, yep. and I had a pretty good, you know, experience with it, you know. But now that you know, um, you know, the new version of myself going back into coaching, you know, is going to be a, a far more better experience. Yes, you know, yes. Before. And you guys, I'm gonna put the link for DK's Instagram down below. And I believe you're on mm -hmm. you're on uh, uh, Facebook too. But yes. you know, there's so many more of these great quotes that he's got, and he's so much fun. He, he responds immediately and yes. with such enthusiasm, you know, reach out because he's and I love that, you know, so many people are just like, I want to do coaching, and I'm like, Yeah, because you're the god of this reality, don't you want to help? You know, people mm -hmm. are praying to you and hearing you. You have, right. yeah, you have right. a responsibility. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, another thing too, like what made me want to start, you know, uh, you know, coaching people, you know, about the law is Candace. Candace yeah. really inspired me because, yeah. you know, Candace thought that is because it's another coach by the name of Candace too, but Candace thought is what we talked about. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, um, it was one of her YouTube videos where it says, uh, come out of hiding or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And that right there spoke volumes to me, you know, and I was like, I was like, okay, okay. All right. All right. I'm, I'm going to do what you say. I'm, I'm going to come out of hiding. I'm going <laughs> oh, oh, <you> know, <laughs> to yes. I'm 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 pull yes. back that curtain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Revise your whole everything you get to revise your whole life you get to revise every moment you get to revise so much and it's amazing and you've heard her talk about how she revised her childhood from exactly exactly that. yeah and it and it you immediately start seeing proof and it's just so much fun and oh yeah yeah but i'm gonna wrap Most this up thank you again this was so much fun i can't wait to get it out and about and hang in there for a minute after i stop the recording <laughs> okay see you guys thanks for coming by